Hi, it's John, and we're in um, Our Lady Conceived Without Sin, formerly St. Fanahan's Church and Graveyard in uh, Mitchellstown in County Cork. You're looking at the old 1840 spire, 1850s, uh, and a uh, tower that survives of the older church, and there's a more modern church behind that. And then here we are in a D-shaped um, graveyard across the, from the, um, the old church. And there's a few features I want to look at in here. Uh, we're in the town of Fermoy. We're up on the the hill that looks down over the square, which is down that direction. Off to our north are the Galtee Mountains, um, covered in snow today. And the um, graveyard, nicely looked after. I've been here before when they're cutting the grass. Um, and it's a busy spot because it's in an urban setting and it's up alongside a couple of schools, so you'd often get school children passing by. Uh, it's not our typical rural graveyard because the oldest uh, memorial here is this one that we're looking at here. Quite an ornate pedestal inside in a, um, uh, a cover. It's, you know, it's concrete made. It has a date on it of 1810. So based on all that we've read, 1810 is the earliest date on a headstone here. Um, but I'm beginning to wonder now. Um, if it's a later feature with that concrete and reinforced um, steel inside in the um, iron, sorry, inside in the, the structure. John O'Mahony and his mother. Uh, a bit of a puzzle, but uh, we definitely don't have anything older than that. Uh, this corner I wanted to look at, the sunlight is against us. But this tall stone here is Fitzgerald Grave. But this tall stone here is uh, the work of monumental sculptor Seamus Murphy, who's one of the Irish, the best Irish um, uh, sculptors uh, that we have. And who is it? Edmund Wall, 1945. Beautifully lettering, beautiful lettering, uh, and just kind of classy from Murphy. It's got his lovely sense of scale and perspective. Um, in the project, we've been looking particularly at uh, one of the features we look at, one of the stories, is it relates to the famine. And what's extraordinary here, there's 154, 158 uh, headstones here, but only about six of them date to the period of the famine. And uh, uh, this one here, from the 1845 to 1852, let's say that's one. Uh, this one here is one. So if we only had six gravestones going in across. Um, a seven year period. That's only one a year. So who's this? These are Condon's. Gertine Tariff. Um, do you know what? I can't see the date in that now. Let me go over and have a look at this one. Uh, if there's only six gone in in that uh, period, for seven year period, that's only one headstone a year. And that's very small. So I think what you're seeing is economically um, which is home would have been suffering uh, during the time of the famine. Uh, so Thomas Myers, 1851, age 92. So he got to a good old age uh, and it's a nice fine piece. Uh, so life and death went on as normal during the famine. It was only the very poor people and then uh, you can get wealthier people affected by it too if they happen to cross paths, if they, if they were in close enough counters with them. And, um, could have been uh, hit by typhus and um, uh, that 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 was you caught that by uh, transmission by lice I think um, so uh, this box tomb here this is the memory of Mary relic of uh, Michael Fitzgerald's so it's very it's very grand and the Fitzgerald's are old old monster name um, in the city of Limerick Esquire who departed his life the day of March 1843 so that's a pre-famine high status um, grave there um, and then uh, this always struck me as a posh bit of the site very often when uh, graveyards were opened and they were getting the new Victorian type of uh, grave monuments uh, the ones closest to the road, the plots closest to the road would have cost more 
because they were more visible you were paying for visibility and the type of people you would have been paying would have been these Jacksons here because Jacksons were monumental sculptors and you can see that's a very fine um, uh, grave it's not actually uh, it looks to me like it's a full chamber underneath um, covered uh, with slabs and a cross slab there and then they had this uh, obelisk type cover on top with a cross on top Jackson family T Jackson died 1840 and then his daughter Catherine died 1849 Poor old Catherine was only 19, while the dad was 55. Um, so, uh, how did they die during the famine? Maybe did they catch a disease? Did they die from um, natural causes? We, we don't know. Uh, maybe we can find that out. Um, and just to look at just the high, you know, the family were obviously grieving when they carved this and when they designed it. And you can see they expressed that uh, in the detail of what they did, of their work. Uh, and then this one down here, an absolute stunner of a gravestone, uh, right alongside the road. Um, so it would have been highly visible and it's extremely ornate. It's an absolute beaut. And this is very strong links with America. These were Sullivan's of Pollardstown. Uh, there's the crucified Christ, very ornate. Erected by Captain William Sullivan, 1st NH Regiment. U.S. Volunteers, to the memory of his father, James Sullivan of Pollardstown, born 1814, died 1872. His sister, his brother James, 1868, 1867. So the dad died in 1872, the sister died in 1867, um, an older brother died 1855, no, no, 1868. So 72, 67, 68. And then a sister died in 1897. Requis Cat in Patia, May Day, rest in peace, the burial place of. So, uh, if that Captain Willem was across in, uh, in an American volunteer in the War of Independence, um, I presume either they had money here or he was sending money home. Uh, it's probably a bit of both, actually. So, a very fine um, piece. And you can see then this one down here as well at Manny's. Um, so, she's an absolute beauty of a graveyard. Uh, and uh, when you contrast this graveyard with St George's which is a, a, a site we'll be doing a video on uh, soon um, there's a different range of surnames represented on the headstones in here uh, this is almost certainly completely Catholic um, uh, in burial which is fairly unusual in an Irish context quite a lot of our uh, graveyards are mixed Catholic and Protestants um, and I just want to see now have I got our uh, surnames? These are the surnames from um, St. George's. Who have we got? Bailey, Childs, Raymond. There is a Fitzgerald there, so we have Fitzgeralds here and Fitzgeralds there. Uh, I, I'm guessing Catholic and Protestant, but I'll, I'll have to ask the local historians to be sure, to be sure. And have I got another? Yes, here we are at the back. At the back we have the surnames for this graveyard and they are dominated uh, Walsh, Casey, Fitzgerald, Fitzgibbon, Reardon all your typical Kyleys even typical Munster surnames uh, and um, uh, quite a range of them as well uh, I wonder why Walsh is so dominant this project is funded by uh, uh, a number of partners in, in um, Cork County Council, Limerick County Council, uh, organised through Ballyhara Development CLG and funded uh, uh, by the Department of Rural and Community Development as part of the European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. A uh, fantastic funding source for local communities to get their um, heritage online and to share it with um, their, their neighbours near and far. And I'll leave you with a shot of the Galtis, Lusenshin. Beautiful place to be buried.